Okay, so quite a technical um, video this one, but it's still you need to know it, and it's well worthwhile, and it's very, very interesting. So fusion, fission, and binding energy. Uh, in the previous video, we saw briefly that um, when you take the individual mass of all the nucleons and you stick them all together in a in a, the nucleus of an atom, that the mass doesn't add up. Um, in fact, the mass is less than it should be. Um, and the reason is that a certain amount of energy has come come off of that, um, and uh, that that energy was removed to make them stick together, and that to make them come apart again, so that if you wanted to uh, separate these nucleons, you would have to add energy into the system to do that, and that would restore the the mass because remember energy and mass are the same thing in the system and you'd have to restore that lost energy or lost mass as energy um, in order to separate those nucleons. Now, and also mention briefly how, um, for instance, you could take uranium and that can split into two different parts. Maybe, uh, I think one example is barium and uh, krypton. Um, and uh, the, the energy stored in uranium is more than the energy of barium added to the energy of krypton. So there's an energy loss as well, which is used to uh, in nuclear power to heat water um, to uh, uh, drive, make steam, drive turbines, and then uh, run a, basically motors, uh, generators, giant generators, which is transmitted through the power grid. Um, so, so binding energy um, takes this... Uh, this idea of, uh, we didn't talk about it before, but there's a mass deficit, that's what the, the that missing mass is, we call it a mass deficit, not mass deficit as in because it's a huge deficit uh, of lots and lots of things, but it's just the amount of matter that's missing, and that's converted to energy to bind it, so mass deficit is very important. Now, um, you can talk about the mass deficit uh, per nucleon, um, as a useful measure, or you can talk about um, the the binding energy per nucleon. Binding energy per nucleon. So that means uh, the average amount of energy required um, to be removed to make those nuclei stick together with their particular nucleons. So uh, the takes, if you imagine, it takes a certain amount of energy for for each nucleon um, to make it stay in there. Or another way of looking at it is the separation energy and the amount of energy it takes to to remove that one um, to bring it up to its mass it would have been if it was outside the nucleus. Now, some elements, some uh, elements are much more stable. Some are more stable, which means, energetically speaking, energetically meaning they're more stable. And that means they require more energy to separate them. No, is that right? Double check my brain and then I'll come back to you. Yes, yes it is. It's more energy to separate them. Um, so they have less, if you like, you can talk about this is just my way of of interpreting it, but a, a, uh, a energy potential <laughs> uh, maybe it's an atomic energy potential or nuclear atomic energy potential um, and uh, all fusion, which is joining two things together, all fusion reactions and all fission reactions, which is separating like a fissure or a crack uh, in the ground, fission reactions, all of those fusion and fission reactions can only release energy, that is release energy if the uh, where they're headed towards is the most stable element known to man, which is iron. So no... Um, uh, if, if you if you start with iron and you try and split it, um, you're not going to gain anything because iron uh, will it'll take more energy putting into iron 
um, to split it then it will receive. That is, there'll be more mass locked up in the nucleons once you split iron. However, if you start with heavier elements, so you start with heavier elements uh, such as uranium, which is a very popular one because it's, uh, I guess, it's readily available and it's quite unstable and it's easy to split apart. Uranium um, has a much greater energy potential. It's, uh, it requires less energy to separate it. Um, the nucleons from it um, and uh, when it splits as we've seen before um, the, the, the mass of the constituent nucleons are lower so the nucleons have a lower mass um, lower mass which means they've given off more energy that's of the thing so ur uranium the nucleons are a higher mass um, so they don't take very much energy to add to them to draw them out um, but uh, that also means that when you split uranium up um, they'll go to they'll become atoms or elements that are a lower mass energy uh, amount is trapped inside them so they're more likely to give it off okay tricky Whew. Hard to explain, um, very pre much precision required in the words. But um, let's just draw this graph. Before we, oh, We've talked about nuclear power and how that works, so I don't think I'll get into that again. But if we have this graph of uh, binding energy per nucleon, this is quite a popular graph to draw, and then you have the number of nucleons, or uh, you might uh, talk about the mass number which is the number of nucleons, um, you will have a graph that looks something like this. So, so on the left-hand side, you're dealing with like hydrogen, helium, lithium, and so forth. And then right up at the, at the very, very heavy end, you're dealing with your uraniums and uh, thoriums and, and uh, heavy metals and such forth, barium and all everything else. And then right in the middle, smack in the middle here somewhere, is iron, Fe, and um, now here's roughly how it goes. There's a goes up and there's a small peak. That's where helium is, and it goes down again for lithium, and then it goes back up and it peaks at iron. So that's iron peak, and then this binding energy starts to drop off. So um, the amount of binding energy is maximum uh, for iron. Um, that means it takes the most amount of energy to split it up. That means it's going to you're, you're converting more energy into mass and you're wanting to convert mass into energy. So the only way that you can do that effectively is to um, have, your, have your atoms splitting, going that way, or joining together, which is fusion. And this is fission over here when they're splitting, yeah, for sure. Okay, so now, um, just as an interesting uh, question which I'll leave open-ended for you, is how can you, uh, how can you show from this graph um, that, and your concepts of binding energy and getting power, nuclear power, essentially, how can you show from this graph that fusion would be a much better way of uh, getting energy out um, than fission? Fusion energy better? How, how do you show that that's better from this graph? And you can embed that in the video, uh, in the forum section, and discuss it if you like. Um, you might look like to look at the gradient of the graph at different parts. That's your clue. But uh, take that away and have a little think about it.